Well, I haven't done, Stuart's just making fun of me. I apologize, Stuart, don't make fun of me. Um, I haven't done a thrifting video for a while. So I'm really thinking about fall, just like you guys are and getting my house and my outdoor living spaces really cozy. I'm also thinking a lot about fireside kind of things because it's the time of year when I get my fireplaces cleaned out and I move my firewood stack to right outside my back door. However, uh, it doesn't really feel like that, does it, Stuart? Because it's still very, very hot today. It's in the 90s. I think we've got a cool front coming in this week, though, so I'm, I keep your fingers crossed. Maybe I can help um, induce some of that cool weather by thinking cozy thoughts. So I'm going to talk a little bit about thrifting for hygge, H-Y-G-G-E, that Scandinavian art of making things cozy, making our homes cozy in our outdoor living spaces. And some of these things are coming and some of these things are going because I'm cleaning out a lot of things and taking stuff to the thrift store, to Goodwill, to Salvation Army, and getting ready to rid of some of my own things. But as I was doing that, I thought, oh, this would be really good for this or that. So here's some of my ideas. I digress. So number one, I wanted to show you an idea of something that you have previously seen that I thrifted at Goodwill. It was this candle holder and let's see, where did it come from? This one came from, I think it came from Hobby Lobby. Um, at any rate, it came without these votive cups, and I found these great votive cups on Amazon, you guys. They came in a package of, I think, was it 12 or 24? And they've got subtle different designs on them, geometric designs, which I love because they cast great shadows when you burn your votives in them. Now they fit in here wonderfully. So one thing to look for now at your thrift stores, anything where you can put uh, votive candles in it and elevate it by using some of these. And I will, I will put a link so that you guys know where I got them. Um, they also have, I think, a real Halloween-y vibe to them because they're black and gold. And I'm thinking that I'll probably get some orange colored votive so that when I burn them, it will illuminate kind of with that kind of scary, spooky Halloween vibe. So that is my number one thing. If you go to the thrift store, look for something that can hold votive candles that you can then kind of upgrade with some very unique votive cups. Okay, since we're talking about illumination and candles, you guys know I love to burn candles in the morning. I bet you guys do too. That's my question of the day. Are you someone who really likes to burn candles or even if you use faux candles? If you find that they really up the coziness ante of your home exponentially by burning candles. I burn them to meditate in the morning. Um, I'll burn them throughout the day. Obviously, I am very, very cautious about uh, never leaving them untended. But that's my question for you guys. Do you find candles really indispensable? for creating a cozy environment in your homes? And if so, do you like them scented or unscented? So here is something that I saw. It was on a Serena Crawford feed, I think. I love Serena Crawford style on Instagram. You know how I love a large book table. And she had a large book table that was in her entryway. And on it, she just had, no, well, she had books, obviously, but then staggered up and down on the stack of books. She just had all sorts of glass canisters filled with candles. And so you can find, I don't care what kind of junk store, thrift store, flea market you go to, there is always, I think, an abundance of all sorts of glass vessels of every kind of, of shape and form imaginable. 
like there are some like this that at one time they were probably a florist's vase that you got a flower arrangement in. They may have been a canister that had a broken top. Regardless, there are just so many things. There could just be a bunch of jars and you can just make a pleasing ensemble of different kinds of glass vases, glass containers, and then just put your own candles in them. I like to use all of one candle, preferably white or cream. These are actually battery operated candles. And then you just kind of stage them all over the place and light them all at once. It's so, it's just so festive, I think, and really cozy, and it makes a great fireplace substitute if you don't have a fireplace. So I am going to do that definitely around Christmas, I think. I'm going to just have a whole table filled with glass vessels that I have candles in. And if you use these battery operated ones, you can, you know, do that effect where you take some kind of greenery or a beautiful fall leaf or something, and then you adorn the glass container with it. And obviously, if you use battery operated candles, then it is not a fire hazard. You could put some just little tufts of greenery in there, anything like that. To me, the simpler, the better, um, so that you really see the silhouette and the shape and the form of whatever beautiful natural gift you put in there. And if you give beautiful leaves a spritz, then it helps them capture the candlelight even better, I think. So that's, that's another idea. Look for just all sorts of glass containers and glass vessels when you go to um, when you go to your to your thrift store. Now speaking of leaves and foliage, any kind of, of statement making large centerpiece container that you can get that has an earthy vibe, I think makes a wonderful receptacle for these, these are just fun, you guys. I've been making, and I'll show you how I've styled them inside my home. I have been making leaf bouquets. Now, this one is still kind of dry. I need to give it another spritz, but you can see some of the, some of the leaves that already have that pretty sheen on them. I'm obsessed with this kind of walnut mahogany color. It, they almost look like wood, like they're made out of wood. So I just go up and down the street and I forage for beautiful leaves. I want them to be rather intact, but some of the ones that are tattered have beautiful texture, I think. And another thing that I look at are leaves that have really gorgeous folds to them. So if they have a very interesting, well, none of these want to come out because I've created a bouquet with them, but some of them have really beautiful folds that almost looks like draping on an outfit or a skirt or something. And it's just a fun, it's just a fun thing to do when you forage. And then just put them together with a piece of florist wire or with a tiny little rubber band. And then you can set them. This happens to be a very dusty spittoon. I don't know if it's vintage, old or not, but it's just an old brass spittoon. And then you can find some gorgeous, this is, this is a real magazine thing right now. Just find some gorgeous branches, sticks, any kind of, of woody cuttings. And then you can put, put a beautiful bouquet of leaves in there and it's gorgeous, especially if you're doing it indoors and it's not windy like it is today so that these blow all around. Now I've just got, I'm like I say, I'm obsessed with this walnut color right now, but obviously you can get all sorts of beautifully colored maple leaves, ginkgo leaves um, in gold, in all sorts of uh, cardinal, uh, traditional autumnal colors. So that's kind of a fun thing to do for a very, very quick and easy arrangement. 
Now, if, if you're like me and you go through large quantities of wine, um, or if you're like me and you do lots of spaghetti dinners and things of that nature, then this might be a fun thing to look for at your thrift store. So these are those Chianti bottles that come with this straw. There's probably a, a, a real specific term for it. I don't know what it is, but this, this kind of straw casing. I found these at a thrift store. And if you can't find them unfilled at a thrift store, then by all means, buy them filled at a liquor store or at your favorite wine store and repurpose them by getting some of these color drip candles. So when you burn them, it drips that beautiful multicolored wax all over these Chianti bottles and it makes such a fun, uh, a fun thing to decorate your spaghetti dinner or your Italian dinner when, when you entertain or just for the family. So growing up, Periodically, my mom would set the table with a red and white checkered tablecloth with, for my whole massive family. I have nine brothers and sisters, and she would set the dining room table, and she would have candles like this on the table with some of these multicolored waxed dripping. Um, just, I, I just love the way it would cascade down the side. And then we would all get a little bit of red wine with lots of 7-Up in it. And we thought it was really very festive. And I think it was a, a fun thing that I remember to this day. So this is a very hygge kind of fall thing to do if you like to eat lots of pizza or spaghetti or ravioli in the fall. Okay, here's another idea that was inspired by my friend Emily at, Ellen Ga at 11 Gables on Instagram. She has a fabulous coffee bar with one of those really big fancy coffee machines and everything. I do not, but I thought this would be so fun. I was talking earlier in another video, we'll put a card up about planned spontaneity. And I thought, okay, there are ways to plan spontaneous things. So if you've got your, uh, your kids, your grandkids, anybody over if you're entertaining and you're serving waffles or you've got your own coffee bar or anything along those lines where you have things like cinnamon sugars or cocoa powder or uh, nutmegs, anything like that that you would sprinkle into your coffee, onto your ice cream, onto your waffles, then it would be really fun to take some of these. Just These are so endearing, I think. These were bottles that were used for club soda or tonic water or something like that. I got these at a thrift store, but I recognized the bottle. And then I just got some corks that form fit the top. And I thought, okay, you could put cinnamon sugar in here, nutmeg, anything like that, loose teas. You could give them as a trio for a gift. You could set them on your coffee bar or your tea bar. I think that would be so fun. And then if you wanted to give them as a gift, then you could just put your own little tag suspended from some jute or something on it. You could describe on the back what the contents were. And I think that would just be such a fun little gift. And I found these at the thrift store. Another thing that I think, um, it, as a category is something that I look for when I go to the thrift store. I've talked a lot about l always looking for things that are metallic, like this votive, votive holder, or things that are wood of organic materials. But now I find that I've, I have expanded some of those categories to include things that are a certain shape. And right now I have found anything in kind of a long rectangular shape, so practical and so uh, so useful around the house, whether it's in the bathroom, um, on the back of your, your toilet, or if it's on a narrow shelf in your bathroom, but any kind of narrow baskets or containers like this, I think are wonderful. So this was at the thrift store. And then I found just these three glass dishes. Since I, I was at the thrift store, I could just use this as my template, as my guide to see which of the thrift store dishes would fit. And these three did. 
and this would be perfect you guys for um, for taco Tuesday for um, if you're if you're making nachos and you want all sorts of different kind of salsas and things on them if you're serving a lot of times I have a very special Mexican casserole that I serve that we always serve with lots of different salsas and things it would also be great if you are doing roasted weenies or things like that outside by your outdoor fireplace or if you're on a picnic you can take this you can put your ketchup your mustard mustard your relish your chopped onions whatever in there for your hot dogs i think that would be really really fun would fit into a picnic basket it would make a great housewarming gift or hostess gift if you were going over to somebody's home. There's just so many different ways that you could use this. If you're baking cookies with your grandkids, you could put all sorts of different colored sprinkles and things in here. So anything that is rectangle, rectangular and that you could put little tiny individual containers in, I think is absolutely brilliant and is very hygge-ish, hygge by the fire. So speaking of roasting hot dogs, sausages, it's almost Oktoberfest time, marshmallows, s'mores, here are things that I have seen a number of times at the thrift store. And these are kebab steaks. So if you see these, then you can prepare for spontaneous celebration by having a whole setup dedicated to nothing but s'mores. So get your rectangular container or a basket, put some of these shish kebab spikes in them, and that way you could use them. Now, you'd have to be careful because these will heat up for marshmallows, but nevertheless, I think they're still long enough that you could use them uh, to make your s'mores, to put your weenies on, to make shish kebab. You could do all of those sorts of things, and you could have it all ready to go uh, what's that expression? Prep a porte, uh, ready, ready to wear clothing. This is uh, prep a entertain or <laughs> prep a decor or prep a higgy, where you have all of your things already ready to go, so you can do something that is really fun indoor or outdoors. Now, my husband knows. Uh, well, there's many ways, obviously, that he knows that it's fall, and my kids did too, because he would say, "Is it time for the nut bowl yet?" And I love to have a nut bowl for whole nuts out in the fall. Now, I have not seen whole shelled nuts out yet, but it is something that definitely is always on the table in front of the fireplace in between our mom and dad chairs. As soon as it's the season for nuts that you crack and consume yourself, you can oftentimes find these little nutcrackers, these little nut picks at thrift stores. You definitely, I've often seen these nut bowls, but it doesn't have to be a dedicated nut bowl. It can be any kind of bowl that you find beautiful. Fill it with nuts, get some of these off of Amazon or from your local thrift store, and it makes a really fun, wonderful gift, I think, as a hostess gift, as um, just a, as a surprise gift if you're visiting someone. I love that idea and I think also if you're of a certain age like I am, these nut bowls hold special memories because we always had them growing up. So I think that's really a fun idea, a fun thing to look for and definitely is very hygge-ish as fall arrives. Um, another thing that I think is great for for centerpiece styling, I had this in my cabinet and as I was going through things that I was going to take to the thrift store, I had one of these wire frames that holds whatever you want it to hold. And sometimes you can find maybe not this exact same thing, but something similar that could be used to create kind of an indoor topiary or any kind of fall decor topiary. And you can use this all through the seasons. I can tuck just a leaf underneath it and it immediately upgrades some of these baby boo pumpkins. If you're having an apple tasting party, you could put apples in here. I've got some dried pomegranates. As I was segueing this and transitioning it from fall to winter, I would have maybe some of these, these uh, 
dried pomegranates, other kinds of dried fruits. I would probably tuck arborvita or some kind of conifer underneath here. It would be, I think, just a a really easy, fun way to make a centerpiece. You could put a saucer on top, you could have these pumpkins below, and then you could use it um, on your buffet table with little uh, Rice Krispie treats or pumpkin squares, something like that on top of this. So it's both functional and it's pretty. And again, you don't have to find this exact thing. Quite often there are just wire frames that have been used for other purposes that you could repurpose as some kind of fall centerpiece. Um, I just think it's a really fun way to get your creative juices flowing. Something else that I like to do, and this will be my, my last thing is, and this is like thrifting your neighborhood. So a lot of times people are having garage sales at the church up my street. There is a woman up there who frequently just puts out table, tables where she sells, oh, just different kinds of things. And she was set up last weekend. This is a woman that's become, of, become a friend of mine because she walks in the neighborhood all of the time. She had a brain aneurysm and she was mending and healing and I used to see her walking all of the time. And she would always wear these distinctive turbans that I loved. So we became friends because she would walk by the garden. And I noticed the other day that she was set up outside of her church just a block away and she had a whole table full of costume jewelry. The kind of thing that when you're out walking you sometimes see set up in church parking lots or just, just wherever. And it's a fun way to thrift. And, I, and it was getting kind of hot because it's been unseasonably warm and she was starting to put her things away. And so I stopped and I helped her because it was way too hot for her to be doing that on her own. Anyhow, I helped her put her things away and I, there were a couple of pieces I found and I said, oh, make sure to save these for me. I don't have my wallet with me and I'll get them from you later. And she showed up the other day gifting these things to me because I had helped her put, um, put some of her things away. And here's just two of them. This is a wonderful bracelet. These are metallic beads, but I think it looks especially nice with my ensemble today. This was one of the things she gifted me. And this was something else that I just loved. And I had, I was just instinctively drawn to them, but I honestly, I didn't really know what they were and she had to tell me. And they were just these little vintage jeweled clips. And I wasn't sure at that point because I hadn't examined them closely if they were clip-on earrings or what. But no, they are clips. And she told me that when you wear like shoes that are loafers or things like that, that you clip these on the tongue of the loafer and it embellishes them, I guess like Louis the 15th or something. But there are different ways, different uh, kind of inspired ways you could probably use them. And I think it's just so fun if you had on a real frilly collar, putting them both, they kind of like collar stays or something. If you know what these are called, um, if there's specific terminology, then I would love to know because these are just beautifully vintage. I can see using them on one of my hats, all sorts of ways that you could use these. And I think they're just beautiful. So that is my last thrifting tip to kind of thrift your neighborhood and your churches and festivals, Oktoberfests, um, things like that that are going on right now as people try to take advantage of the more pleasant weather and they set up their, um, they set up their point of purchase thrifting displays. So there's just some ideas. Let me know if any of them resonate with you and you shop your closets, your thrift stores and get your hooga on. 
Well, if you've held on this long, here is your fashion epilogue. If you're not interested, by all means, just go on to the next video. So my sweater today I got from Anthropology. I've had it for several years. I like it because it's kind of, it's great for transition weather and definitely we're in transition weather right now. It's hot during the day, kind of cool in the evening. Uh, my t-shirt comes, I think it's an Ann Taylor Loft t-shirt. My britches, I have had these bootleg jeans since my son was in junior high. I bought them at a Gap in Utica Square in Tulsa. And I know this because I remember buying them after my son had a junior high basketball game in which he, he scored a whole lot of points. <laughs> so I remember that. And every time I wear these jeans, I think of that basketball game and that happy memory. Um, my boots. My boots are my cowboy boots that I got at Langston's in Cattleman's District in Oklahoma City that were a gift from Hubs. My earrings are from Ponderosa Boutique. These are the ones that I've worn several times this fall. And I'm amazed, you guys, at how many things they go with. I wouldn't have thought they would be kind of a staple in my earring collection, but they go with an amazing number of things. I really like them and they're lightweight. Um, my bracelets, just a montage of different things. Um, I got this at some kind of uh, street fair. This leather one my sister gave me. This one belonged to my mom. This one I've just had forever. And my belt, I think I also got it to get years ago. So there you go. There is my fashion epilogue for today.